cotton trade, the biggest of them is the TPP. It is important to understand the pros and cons of the TPP as well as the impact on the member and the non-member countries. It is high time that we raised strategic alliances, strategic policies, linkages with the supply chain at the same time addressing the risks in the trade which are now multifactor. So to start with, what do you think uh, Patik Bhai? I would like all of you to share your thoughts on this. This is the single key factor that drives the global cotton market today. a single key reason or a factor which drives the global market today is most important is the government policies. Firstly, we see a Chinese reserve. We have Indian MSP. Apart from Indian MSP, we have seen you know recently uh, a state government intervening the cotton market. Like in Gujarat recently, like in last November, they gave an incentive, the bonus. Coming here, Remember, we have an election of four states. Out of four states, two states are cotton growing regions, mainly Punjab and Gujarat. And I see again a government interference, state government interference to the cotton market. And basically to protect, you know, the farmers and it's a vote bank game. So I think the government policy is one of the key driver for cotton prices. Thanks for thinking. Uh, if you ask me, uh, my answer would be different from Pratik. I would say it would be the US ending stocks for this crop year. Uh, lately we are seeing, uh, as I said earlier, a big demand from Pakistan for the US uh, non tenderable stocks that are uh, held in uh, US uh, at the moment. And uh, if the US sales uh, pick up uh, to the 200,000 bales, uh, 200 to 300,000 bales that we saw in January and February, uh, and lately there have been only around 100,000. If the U.S. sales uh, come back to that level, uh, the U.S. exports could be higher than the 9.5 million bales that is currently assumed by USDA. If it is even half a million bales higher, I would say the prices would go up by 5, five, five cents very easily. Right. As I said in my presentation, U.S. impacts the futures markets more than anything else. Thank you, Sandeep. Dear Mr. Uh, I in the short term, I think both my uh, predecessors are correct, both uh, government intervention and uh, the situation in the United States will have a crucial in, uh, influence on the short term uh, development of cotton prices. In the longer term, I think the real key is the fight with artificial fibers and the demand situation. Because globally, right now, we do not have too much cotton, but we have insufficient demand. And uh, so, in the real long term, I think that's going to be crucial. How can cotton maintain its position, its market share in the fiber market? Thank you. Yeah, Deepak. Uh, hi. Uh, I would uh, agree with uh, Thomas. Actually, the biggest uh, factor right now is uh, the demand of uh, the appearance uh, per se and the RNG. Uh, today, all of us are aware of the SMDs, all of us are aware of uh, the population, the spread activity. But then, that's all, like uh, Thomas said, it's all short term. Longer term, uh, I would say even much longer term, it all depends on the individual. It starts with us. We are the consumers as, a, as an individual person. Uh, world economy is growing, uh, but capital income is growing. Uh, everything is growing, then uh, why not the cotton consumption? So I guess uh, to a large extent it's uh, the consumption in one single factor. Thanks all of you. So we can summarize the global cotton price is somewhat driven by government policies, the US uh, index and supply and demand. So demand is what uh, is more important than the supply in, in the current time, right? Coming to the next question, what will be the practical impact of China's sale policy on global cotton prices considering the quality and the Pricing of the result stock. Anyone of you can start. He, yes, we were actually waiting for you to address this issue. Well, I have to admit that uh, nobody really knows. 
about China. Uh, that makes it easy for me because I can say whatever I want, nobody can prove me wrong. <laughs> uh, but uh, seriously speaking, I tend to agree uh, with what Sandeep uh, said before in his uh, excellent speech that the Chinese situation is very much a local situation. And what is really affecting the global prices, uh, that is the international trade, uh, much more than what is going on locally in China. Uh, so, uh, I do think uh, over the next few years, China will succeed in reducing its own inventory, but it will take at least two years, it's quite likely more than that. Okay. Uh, and, and for the international market, it just means that the world will have to live with limited Chinese exports, uh, Chinese imports, limited Chinese imports, like we have this year. I don't think we will have a boom in Chinese imports again in the next two or three years. Now, in the longer term, uh, once the stocks are uh, more or less down to an equilibrium level, uh, we have seen from your analysis that fundamentally, if the market price in China is about low market price, uh, crop is about 3 million pounds less than consumption. And if there is no more need for uh, uh, reserve reduction in the long term, China is going to be back as a very significant importer again. But that's not going to be today, that's not going to be next year, but maybe three, four years from now. Right, we'll have to bear with that you have the situation. Uh, I agree with uh, Thomas, uh, but as regards the aspect about the usability of the cotton, uh, uh, that's a uh, that's a question. Uh, my personal opinion is uh, one, one thing I've seen is everything sells. It's a matter of the price. Yes. And that if, uh, if, uh, if indeed the cotton quality is bad, which is what some people are expecting, then uh, they will have to reduce the prices accordingly. Because they did say that there is a discount, which I forgot to tell in my presentation, there's a discount from 800 to 1400 RMB per metric ton, which they will give okay. based on the uh, revised certification of the grades. So if the price is not 12,000 but uh, 10,500 uh, for a low grade cotton, let's say, I think it would move at 10,500 because uh, there are lower counts uh, being made in China as well, although they don't import much of that cotton. But we have seen at times when the futures in the uh, mid 50s, they have imported very low grade US cotton as well. So I would uh, say, I agree with uh, Thomas that uh, these guys, uh, due to the gap of 3 million tons that exist, exist between the consumption and the crop, they have uh, they have actually done a smart thing. They have reduced the crop uh, by giving differential subsidy in uh, Xinjiang versus the rest of China. They have brought the crop down from 6 million tons to, uh, sorry, 7 million tons to uh, almost uh, something like 5 million tons. So this, uh, this is going to gradually in 3 years take care of the reserve stocks. And they will be back into the market uh, after three years as an importer, and uh, prices would uh, then probably start to move. Right. Yeah, okay. I think I agree with uh, Sandeep. Everything sells depending on the prices. And I think <coughs> we will have good sales in first or second week of uh, you know May, as they are going to release import imported cotton first. Good right. uh, grade. Yeah. <coughs> I think it's uh, going to counterbalance uh, the overall uh, prices, uh, as we all know that you know Chinese uh, deserve policies. If uh, they were to reduce uh, prices, uh, local consumption grows up, uh, imported yarn will come down. So obviously, it's going to be counterbalancing more than the Chinese policy. It is all about what's happening in China. The uh, population is growing, the urbanization is increasing. Uh, every year, they are creating 22 million more urban people. The per capita uh, consumption of uh, urban to rural uh, it would increase by $160, uh, $160 times uh, let's say 22 million people would work out to be a big number in billion. So that's an additional demand which is being created in China which is uh, much much more important. Consumption, I uh, mean sorry, production is another thing within China which is extremely important. Uh, uh, this differential policy between uh, Xinjiang and the other areas uh, may not work out. Uh, effectively, the uh, production will go down. Uh, they are more uh, food sensitive rather than uh, uh, consumer durable sensitive. So I would say that it's uh, it's overall thing, and uh, yeah, we would see more stability. 
through the counterbalancing act, improving demand, and then uh, let's hope for the best for all of us. Right, so we can uh, conclude from this uh, particular question that China will take some time, maybe two, three, four years, but it will be back. And uh, I think, yes, consumption may not uh, increase substantially in the year or two, but in the years to come, definitely that can increase. Uh, coming to the next question, how important are trade agreements, especially the TPP? We'll come to the pros and cons, but how important they are, what I mean, uh, impact can they have on the global trade? Uh, I don't know uh, very deeply on this subject, but uh, the TPP is uh, in its earlier, in its infancy, I would say. There's a lot uh, to understand uh, better about it. Uh, what I understand from my friends in Vietnam is that they are interpreting it as highly positive for their own economy. Uh, they, they expect uh, uh, government uh, exports uh, from uh, uh, from Vietnam to US uh, to continue rising sharply and uh, they are investing uh, real money into, into building more and more factories uh, to make garments, uh, fabric, uh, yarn, everything. Uh, so if you go by the actions, I would say it would be positive. Right. I personally not uh, read the whole agreement or understood it in detail. Uh, what would be the real impact? Uh, right. Is that anything? Thomas, I'm not a specialist either. Uh, just looking at the economic history, uh, an increase in trade has always been uh, correlated to an increase in uh, growth. So I suppose what's good for international trade should also help international economy in general. Uh, so I agree that uh, it's likely to be positive, but uh, I'm not uh, in a position to make any. To me, uh, trade agreements, uh, they do exist in various uh, parts of the world. Uh, people, I mean, the countries do form uh, some uh, back of uh, right people. Here in DPP, what I understand is uh, two things. One is uh, the privileged access and uh, number two is the cost of funding. Uh, cost of funding, I guess, uh, to a large extent, uh, we have a huge amount of NPAs across the world. Uh, the financial institutions are more than willing to support uh, the uh, investments. So I guess uh, what I had heard is about uh, one one half percent kind of a cost of funding which uh, DPP may unlock. Uh, I guess uh, in uh, different part of parts of the world that uh, costs are already there, being financed by uh, the financial institutions. Uh, coming to the privileged access, uh, I guess it is more about uh, where the demand centers are as of now and where it would be in the future. As of now, uh, yes, the western part of the world loop, uh, TPP though it is the eastern part. Uh, US and Europe are more towards uh, the consumption centers, but in the time to come as uh, we have seen that uh, the population is more uh, Asia driven. So I guess in a very long term, it, uh, may not be that uh, privileged. Right? Okay, Mike. Yeah. Well, I don't have anything to say, much because I don't have a deep understanding of TPP. No, but I think any trade agreement. See, if India is entering into a trade agreement, with definitely it's a positive sign for, for uh, any Eastern countries. You know, and uh, it brings a lot of investments. You know, with this Vietnam. That's a positive sign. Right. Right. Just to speak about the TPP, it's a historical agreement between 10 countries which comprise about 40% of the global trade. Now, only for US, it would mean that it would remove about 18,000 barriers, the trade barriers that US has to face amongst the world countries. So, it is, uh, the impact may be huge if implemented. The only thing is the accountability in the transparency which is not there right now like uh, Sandeep mentioned there is a lot of unclarity yeah, lot of okay. they haven't spelled out the spelled out the fine details so uh, trade agreements are here to exist and we have to live with them so how to face them is what we have to design within our uh, business and scaling up how will uh, how do you see the non member countries like of TPP we keep the TPP aside like India, Bangladesh and China in the next 
two to three years? Uh, I think uh, India and uh, Pakistan uh, have the strength of uh, having local cotton. They have local cotton at a very good price as well. I mean, these two countries will continue to remain competitive, I would say. And uh, Bangladesh uh, hitherto had uh, low energy prices and low labor prices. The labor prices will continue to be low. Uh, there was a lot of debate about energy prices yesterday and whether this, uh, this uh, doubling, which is actually a quadrupling compared to a year and a half or two years ago, will actually happen. I don't know. But if it does, uh, we have to see whether it impacts uh, Bangladesh uh, somewhat. In terms of China, uh, like Deepak said, I agree that uh, the, the population increase, especially with the two-child policy now, uh, will, uh, will probably take care of uh, consumption in China. That's going to grow. And uh, therefore, uh, and they have still a lot of strengths in terms of uh, textiles particularly. The infrastructure that exists to make garments, that's not easy to build. It can't happen overnight in any country. Uh, I think that's something which uh, India actually lacks. So that's uh, that's that that's uh, India especially. especially. Yes, I, I would say uh, these are giants, and they will continue to be giants. Uh, Bangladesh, uh, the impact of the energy. Uh, my personal opinion is that uh, it will uh, uh, Bangladesh will ride through it uh, pretty well. And uh, uh, there are uh, expansions in spinning happening. In fact, some guys would stop the expansion because they didn't have gas connection. Now they are going ahead because they say now I don't have is it going to be anymore anyway. If it's going to be at the normal price of electricity, uh, I believe the gas prices will touch electricity prices after the okay. proposed investigation. Then uh, they are going to come with that capacity. And once they come with the capacity, uh, yesterday Mr. Vadur called a nice thing. The, the efficiency wise, the Bangladesh industry uh, per spindle is still at uh, 180 as compared to 210 in India and Pakistan. So they can improve efficiencies and uh, uh, cover that uh, energy part. So this is